Welcome to Transformation Matters. Shift from grumpy to grateful, from heartbroken to happy, from helpless to hopeful, from jealous to joyous and cluttered to clarity. Using 12 themes from the book Live Inspired, stories of brave self-discovery and the wisdom gleaned along the way, I will be sharing an idea, a brief story, and tips you can practice for a holistic transformation of your heart, space, and life. I'm Laura Staley, founder of Cherish Your World and author of Live Inspired. I passionately guide people to heal, transform, and thrive. Today, I'm sharing about get your house in order with a brief story and some tips, ideas. Boy, I remember telling a woman... um, Well, actually, she shared with me that the reason she didn't get her clutter cleared was because this idea of get your house in order meant that she was close to death. And so a clear space meant that she was going to die. And it it terrified her. She obviously was terrified of, of dying and yet lived surrounded by clutter because she had the two things collapsed those two ideas um that gosh if you have a clear space that meant death is imminent well here's the thing what i know is some people die in clear spaces some people live a really long time and thrive in clear spaces some people have clear spaces and they're all hot mess and on the inside of their hearts they're still very unhappy and anxious, um, critical of others, crunchy. <laughs> I, call, I call it kind of being crunchy. <laughs> and I know it because I, I have definitely lived that way and occasionally still have those moments <laughs> of the underwear getting up in the bunch <laughs> like a wedgie, right? Uh, in the meantime, she wasn't the, this woman wasn't necessarily living her life in freedom and joy. Right, because it's kind of like wow. The flip side is, if we're so terrified of death, then we've forgotten how to live. Whew! <laughs> and there's a there's a rich thought, right? Belongings and likely the physical structure of a house likely will outlive you. I know. Most of us don't sit around thinking about that, but they will unless you've lived through a flood or fire or hurricane that washed away all your belongings in your house. You, you really may pass on and this physical structure will remain behind. That's just a fact. And so will the photographs and the dishes and the pictures that you of artwork that you had up on the wall of that house and yeah that's just real (laughs) and still the question remains how do you want to live while you're actually alive and what are the belongings that support and inspire you living that really amazing fulfilling life until the moment that you do part this planet well the story I wanted to share with you is uh, several months ago I received word that the house that I rent here in North Carolina was going to be sold by the owner and so I realized wow okay I may need to move And I went on a search to look for a new place to live in the event that an investor didn't purchase the property. And I did see a house that had a Shel Silverstein poem on the outside. I took I took that as a good a good sign. It was the poem The Tree House by Shel Silverstein. And I walked in the front door and there was a bench and these hooks that reminded me of that that space that little kids can use to 
drop all their belongings and have their little cubby to hang their and hook to hang their coat and spot to put their shoes or their belongings, their backpacks, etc. And I thought, wow, this might be a place that I that I could live. Mostly I stayed really fluid and open hearted uh, as I really have enjoyed the place I rented. As it turned out, uh, an investor did purchase the property, so I didn't have to move. And it made me very aware of when the choice isn't yours and it's someone else's. Like, oh gosh, you get you get evicted or some circumstance comes up that is out of your control and you have to relocate. How disorienting that can be. And then to be able to adapt and shift it's a very different experience than if you're consciously choosing it's time to move. And in either case, uh, getting that, getting that house in order is really important because gosh, in the moving process, for sure, you want to let go of anything that's not going to serve you in that, in that future, in that future home. Here are some thoughts about getting your house in order. How are you choosing to live? Can you take one action today to free your heart from emotional pain or open a drawer and place in a, in a donation box some items you no longer need, use, or love? Can you then drive these to your favorite local charity or thrift store? Can you call someone you love and let them know you love and appreciate them? Could you recognize death as your favorite teacher of how you want to live your life? What if you really did have only one week to live? What would you do? Who would you talk and listen to? What would you say? What's yearning to be expressed from your heart? Can you imagine not holding hands with the deliciousness of this life? Who are you becoming and what are you doing with all these sacred moments of your precious, most beautiful life? Gather support for clearing your house of unloved items if you have these. Create a vision for the experiences you want to have that may really support you. I mean, how do you want to spend your time? You know, we, I, it makes me think of how we have focus and our life force energy, and we get to choose how we want to use that. If you're holding on to things because you think your adult children or grandchildren will want them, ask them, <laughs> call them up, get your phone out. Ring them and say, hey, do you want any of these things that are in my house right now? And if they're their belongings, ask if they'd be willing to come over and schedule the time when they come, come over and pick up those, those items. You, you might be surprised that they, they just don't want any of the things that you thought they might want. <laughs> Uh, they have different tastes and preferences, and maybe they've learned the lesson of not living um, quite so cluttered. Remember that the memories of how you made them feel and the kind words you spoke, the experiences you had laughing together, will often be what they really treasure, how you listened to them and honored their own unfolding that could be your most enduring legacy rather than any belonging that you would gift to them that they may or may not want (laughs) oh some final thoughts here may you live inspired to clear your space to reflect the harmony you are feeling in your heart May you continue a joyful expansion of your inner and outer worlds because you want to live free, unburdened, awake, alive for as many days as you are fortunate to be on this planet swirling through the galaxies. Thank you so much for listening to Transformation Matters. This is Laura Staley founder of Cherish a World 
and author of Live Inspired, passionately guiding people to transform and thrive. You are loved more than you can even imagine. You matter to our world.